Hey guys, what's up? It's Panther, and if you've been following the channel recently, you'll know we've been doing a lot of one tip for every rank videos, and today is no different. We're going to be going over the mid lane today. Now, I am really excited to do this video because all of my heroes in this game play the mid lane, except for Marin. I still love you, Marin. You're just not a mid laner. If you take a look, you have so many good role models to look up to when you play this lane. Players like Faker, Caps, Bjergsen, all of them are so entertaining and so talented. Players like these show us what it looks like when we push the game to its absolute limits. For this reason, I think they inspire every mid laner to just become the best player they can possibly be. And so I'm here to help you focus on what it is you should specifically be focusing on in each and every rank. You can't become faker in a day, and sometimes you're going to have to focus on different things through different elos. I want to save you some time by showing you what those things are so you can get the best results as quickly as possible. If you haven't already, go ahead and check us out at GameLeap.com. Over there we have hundreds of videos done by challenger players and we're constantly adding new ones. Now without further ado, let's get started in Iron. Now I understand as an Iron mid laner, the game is still probably very overwhelming for you. Not only is this role mechanically the hardest to play, but it also is the main focus of the game, being in the center of the map. As a result, I recommend that you play champions that can safely farm efficiently. Champions like Ari, Lux, Ziggs. You want to be picking these types of champions while you're still learning the game because it allows you to focus on the harder aspects of the game. If you lock in a champion like Yasuo, you're likely just going to be overwhelmed and you're not going to be able to play to your fullest. Now, I'm not saying don't ever lock Yasuo because the only way that you're going to get better at champions like Yasuo is to play him. My recommendation is to save champions like Yasuo or Zed for normal games. This way you're not playing a champion that's so demanding that you're making silly mistakes that you normally just wouldn't. By sticking to simple wave clear mages, it allows you to easily attain CS in the laning phase which will allow you to have much more gold when it comes time to group. As a result, your overall impact will be a lot higher in the mid game. Having ranged wave clear is also very very important in the mid to late game because it helps you defend against sieges. Champions like Zed and Yasuo become very very hard to play the later the game goes. Oftentimes, if you lock these types of champions, you're going to lack wave clear on the team, which means that you're going to be susceptible to being sieged. Just in general, it's better to stay away from assassin or melee bruiser picks in the mid lane in this elo. Moving our way into bronze, you're probably a little bit more familiar with the game now, and as a result, you're going to want to start trading with your opponent more often. Now, trading with your opponent is fine, but you have to keep in mind you don't want to be missing out on CS to make these trades. Anywhere from 10 to 20 CS is the equivalent of 1 kills worth of gold. This means that if you're completely neglecting to farm just so that you can trade with your lane opponent, you're actually missing out on so much gold. This will quickly become a detriment to you if you focus too much on trying to kill the enemy. Remember that League's main driving factors are gold and EXP, so you want to be getting as much of both of these as possible. Try not to roam all that much in this elo and focus on farming above all else. Once the lane phase is over and grouping starts, then it is time to switch your focus from farming to fighting. If you're able to find this balance between farming and fighting and the enemy mid laner isn't, then you will have so much more impact than they will. Just strictly off of farming well in the early game, you can win so many more games than if you're just focused on trying to kill the enemy mid laner. I'd say a good balance is about 80% of the lane you should be focused on farming and about 20% of it you should be focusing on trading. Now once you get into silver and gold elo, you're probably a lot more comfortable with farming in general and you'll be able to focus more time on making trades in the laning phase. This is really good because it opens you up to a lot more viable picks in the mid lane. In this elo, I see a lot of people start to test out lane bully champions in the mid lane, which is fine as long as you're able to maintain your CS. The biggest issue that I see here is people spamming spells way too much. Remember, you don't want to just cast your spells every time they're up. 
This is going to result in you running out of mana way too fast and you're not going to be nearly as impactful as you could be. One of the biggest things that I see people struggle with in these elos is they are split between using their abilities to farm and using them to poke. Ideally, you want to be able to farm as many CS as possible without having to use your abilities to do so. I would highly recommend practicing CSing without your abilities in the early laning phase. If you're able to do this, then you're able to save your mana for trading with the enemy champion, making your laning phase so much more potent. If you're playing LeBlanc mid and you have to use every single one of your abilities just to farm the wave, you're not going to have any mana to trade with the enemy laner. This means you have to make a decision on trading or farming. This is obviously not ideal because you want to be able to do both at the same time. Players that are able to CS with their auto attacks and trade with their abilities will see so much more success specifically in this elo. If your opponent is still farming the wave with their abilities, but you farm the wave with your auto attacks and trade with them with your abilities, you're going to outtrade them more times than not. This is why it's so important to get this down early on. Once you're later on into the game, farming with abilities isn't really a problem since you'll have the mana pool to do it, but early on you don't have the mana to spam your abilities. This is something that you'll need to master before you are able to move on into Platinum Elo. Speaking of Platinum Elo, I think the biggest issue that I see in Plat is players and their roaming habits. I see so many bad roams happen in Platinum just because players are getting frustrated with their lane or they think that their team needs help. Remember, helping your team is always a good thing, but first you need to make sure that you're able to help them without setting yourself behind. So many times I see players that roam way too frequently and as a result they're looking at 40 or 50 CS in the first 10 minutes and being down 2 levels. At this point, you're not even helping your team anymore and you're more becoming a detriment to your team. I want to lay out some general ground rules as to when you are and are not allowed to roam. Now the first and most important rule for roaming is you need to make sure you have a roam timer. In the mid lane, a roam timer pretty much only exists when you've shoved the wave to the enemy tower. This will give you 20 to 30 seconds to look for a roam to either one of the lanes or the jungle. If your wave is not completely shoved to the enemy tower, do not look for a roam as 9 times out of 10, it's not going to be beneficial to you and you're going to lose more than what you get from the roam. Some exceptions to this are a fight breaking out in the river if it is very close to you, or a objective like dragon. Now once you've shoved the wave into the enemy tower and you've confirmed that you have a good roam timer, then you need to make a decision on whether or not either side lane looks gankable. If both side lanes are also pushed to the enemy tower, then obviously roaming to those lanes is not really going to be all that helpful unless you can make a dive happen. Similarly, if your lanes are based and they're not even there to help you, then roaming is also not going to be effective because you're effectively going to be looking at a number disadvantage. It is generally in your best interest to roam to wherever you have the number advantage at. A lot of the time you're going to want to roam to whatever side of the map your jungler is on, if possible. This allows for even more backup if you need it. Now the higher you climb, the more you can generally start bending and breaking these rules, but for now, those are some very very good guidelines to get you started on knowing when you're going to have a good successful roam, and when something is just not going to be worth it. Now moving on up into Diamond, the biggest room for improvement I see in this elo is players need to be more conscious of what the enemy jungler is doing and where they are. You see, ideally you always want to be playing opposite side of the lane to where the enemy jungler currently is. You see, once you get into Diamond, your laning phase itself is pretty good, and even in Platinum, laning phases are pretty well refined and solo deaths don't happen all too much, save for a few niche champions. The biggest issue here is the enemy jungle and dying to ganks. As mid lane is in the middle of the map, it usually finds the most jungle attention. As a result, once you get into diamond, you need to be able to track the enemy jungler and you need to be able to know what side of the lane is safe to play on. If you're able to do this, then it's going to be very very hard for the enemy jungler to gank you and it's going to be very very hard to kill and punish you. 
Lane positioning and your micro movements matter so much in this elo and it's something that you need to actively focus on. You can't just autopilot and completely neglect the enemy jungler because that's when you're going to start getting punished. Always pay attention to what side of the map the jungler starts on. If the enemy bot lane walks to lane late and they're missing mana, then it most likely means that the enemy jungler started bot side. Pairing this information with knowing what the standard enemy jungler's clear is will allow you to track them throughout the jungle. You should be using an early ward on whatever side of the map you think the enemy jungler is going to start on and then play to that ward. Remember, you only need one ward of information to be able to track the enemy jungler for the first four or four and a half minutes of the game. Once that point happens, usually the jungler will show up somewhere else on the map and then you have to track them from where that is. If you're able to figure out specifically whether or not the enemy jungler has done either raptors or krugs on their first clear, then using that information you can tell just how many camps the enemy jungler cleared and what camps are going to be up. This will allow you to dictate where the enemy jungler should reset their clear to after basing. For example, if you get an early ward on Raptors and you know the enemy jungler starts red, the ward on Raptor will tell you how much CS the enemy jungler has when they walk over that ward, as well as whether or not they actually do the Raptors. If you see the enemy jungler walk immediately to Raptors after red with only 4 CS, you know they've only done their buff and they have not even attempted Krugs. You know that after their raptors, they will either look for a gank mid or they will continue to path toward their blue buff. Once you confirm that they're not going to level 2 gank you, you switch the side of the map that you're playing on until your jungler gets close enough to you. If you're able to track this and every single clear in the map, it's almost impossible to gank you. This is how players like Faker and Dopa are able to always know where the enemy jungler is and always draw their pressure without ever being at risk of dying. If any of you are interested in a complete and in-depth guide on tracking the enemy jungler, definitely let me know in a comment down below, as that's something that I would be interested in doing as well. Remember, once you get to the highest echelon of play, mechanics are what matter most. That paired with your map awareness and your team play are going to make the biggest difference. If you watch some of the all-time greats, I'm sure that you'll be able to see some of these tips in action. And while some of these tips were catered to specific elos, a lot of them do translate to the higher elos as well. That's all that I have for you guys today. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you've been enjoying our content. We post new videos done by challenger players every day. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our website, gameleap.com. There we have hundreds of videos done by challenger players organized into a quick and easy to use courses system. We have courses on both the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses and we're constantly adding new courses. We do post some things on the website that we don't post on our YouTube, so if you want to stay completely up to date with what we're doing, make sure to check us out there. As always, I hope you learned something useful and I will see you in the next one.